Nine Twenty Eleven. For your early afternoon entertainment, Channel 9 has presented Midday Movie Today, Son of Kong. Tonight on the Million Dollar Movies, award-winning drama at 8 p.m., Rock Hudson, Lauren Bacall, Robert Stack, and Dorothy Malone star in Written on the Wind. Intrigue and drama at 11 p.m., Sean Flynn stars in Duel at Rio Grande. Don't miss the Million Dollar Movies at 8 and 11 tonight. Stay tuned now for Channel 9 News next. When you look around today, it's hard to find companies that have pride and skill in their craft. We at Pacific Coating have that old-fashioned pride in our workmanship and cover shield textured coating. Homeowners, if your home is beginning to look like this, call us at Pacific Coating and let us restore beauty to your home. First, we trench around foundation. All windows are masked and shrubbery covered for protection. Stucco surfaces are sandblasted to remove loose stucco and old paint. Wood surfaces are scraped and power sanded. All cracks are repaired. Surfaces are then primed and sealed with our silicone protective sealer. Cover shield is applied at 500 pounds per square inch to all stucco surfaces. Wood surfaces are then painted with quality paint of your choice. Premises are cleaned and all debris removed. Call us for a free estimate, 796-4391, and protect and increase the value of your home. Call 796-4391. Financing available on approved credit. This here's Morgan. This here's my dad. I had a habit that was really bad. I sat in a cloud of smoke all day. Blowing little ashes away. Morgan sat at my left side, and he helped me recognize with pride the silliness of smoking these. No more does Daddy cough or wheeze. He couldn't do that as long as I picked up the telephone. I had to quit, and I knew it. Chick Center helped him do it. Very good. <laughs> Daddy, can you go home now? Sure, just wait for the letters to go off the bottom of the screen, okay? If you've got problems and you're getting in deeper all the time, get out the yellow pages because there's somebody in there who may help you borrow thousands of dollars on your home. Fantastic voyages among the star worlds of space beyond time. Space 1999, Saturday night at 7, here on Channel 9. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chris Harris. This is Channel 9 News on a Monday afternoon. President Carter and the leaders of six other major non-communist countries are unveiling what American officials are calling a concrete and concerted action program to deal with global economic problems. Carter and the other leaders are wrapping up an economic summit meeting in Bonn, West Germany. The summit's communique includes specific targets for economic growth, employment, and inflation in each of the seven participating nations. Officials with the Carter delegation also say the summit made great progress on trade, they add that expectations are that international trade barriers will be lowered by the end of the year. The seven nations have also agreed to an anti-terrorism pact to cut off airline service to and from countries which harbor hijackers. That agreement says the seven nations will halt service to such countries and will work to ban incoming flights from those countries as well as by flights by airlines of those countries flying from another country. Senate Democratic leader Robert Byrd said today that President Carter can return home from that economic summit, assured that Congress will give him the tools he needs to reduce oil imports. Byrd says the expected Senate passage tomorrow of the first part of Carter's five-point energy plan will go a long way toward reducing U.S. reliance on oil imports. The legislation would prohibit the burning of oil or natural gas in most new power plants and would give the government the power to force many existing plants and businesses to convert to coal. Well, if you were outside at all over the weekend, you know it. We had the worst smog situation in five years as an unusual inversion layer dropped from the usual two or 3,000 feet to just 200 feet above the ground. The smog sent scores of persons to the hospital with breathing difficulties. And businesses were ordered to cut back on the use of vehicles and switch over to less polluting fuels like natural gas. Employees were urged to carpool, and in many instances, lots were locked and closed to any cars with fewer than three passengers. 
The Air Quality Management District issued second stage smog alerts for the Whittier area and West San Gabriel Valley. And there were first stage smog alerts in southeast LA, the Pomona Walnut area, the east and south San Gabriel Valley, and the east San Fernando Valley. High temperatures added to the misery and forced thousands to turn to air conditioners. And that, of course, produced the highest consumption of electric power on record. By the way, that was the first second stage health advisory ever issued by the AQMD. Those air conditioners we mentioned helped alleviate some of the personal suffering, as the AQMD suggested, that people just stay indoors and take it easy. But the AQMD did get tough with the strictest restrictions in our history, and Phil Cisneros reports. Los Angeles, Riverside, Orange, and San Bernardino counties haven't seen smog like this since about 1973. A combination of temperature inversion, bright sunlight, and the normal air pollution is causing the heavy smog. As a result, the South Coast Air Quality Management District implemented its emergency episode plan. Under the plan, larger businesses are required to take measures which reduce their contribution to air pollution. Some firms are required to encourage employee carpools and cut back on the number of company vehicles in the field. Pollutant producing industries must cut back production and or use alternate power supplies which produce less pollution. Air quality management district inspectors were in full force today making spot inspections of various larger companies. The inspectors checked to see that emergency air quality compliance plans were being followed. Meanwhile, AQMD smog monitoring stations are continuing to check air quality in the four county area. Well, we have 42 air monitoring stations throughout the basin, and these stations are operating every moment of the day and night. And uh, today they're manned because we want to be sure that the values we're getting are quite accurate. These values are brought into the office here and where our uh, technicians evaluate them and give us the results. So we know what's in the air 24 hours a day. Biraco says the air quality is such that it definitely poses a danger to many individuals. He had some advice on what people should or shouldn't do. Those people who, are, who have uh, respiratory ailments or cardiac problems, they'll be suffering the most. And we ask those people to be especially careful, to stay indoors, find a comfort zone, avoid physical exercise. The very young, the very old, they are the first uh, to be hurt the most. We ask them to do the same. Uh, they should avoid all physical exercise, playing tennis, jogging, even doing gardening if necessary. The experts say the unhealthful air conditions should persist through tomorrow, gradually improving over the weekend. But officials say it's too early yet to tell whether Monday will bring a break in the smog. Until then, it might be good to stay at home this weekend. Phil Cisnetos, Channel 9 News, Los Angeles. That report, of course, filmed on Friday, and there has been something of a break in the smog, and we'll have uh, that uh, later in the news in the weather forecast. Those hardest hit by the smog were those suffering from the respiratory problems, such as at Children's Hospital. The children should not regularly be limited in their activity by their chronic disease in the children I see asthma. However, on days like today when the air quality is so bad, most children would do well to limit their outdoor activity certainly until the temperature comes down and the dryness in the air is uh, alleviated. Now we've been talking strictly about children here. What about adults? Uh, what kind of effect will the smog have upon them? It appears that adults with chronic lung disease, emphysema and chronic bronchitis, are even more heavily hit uh, by bad air than children who seem to be naturally resilient. Uh, the adults uh, do worse, their respiratory discomfort increases, and the death rates for both uh, lung and cardiac disease is uh, heightened at times like this. Transportation Secretary Brock Adams is denying a New York Times report that he might resign the Carter cabinet. The Times report says the Carter administration and the transportation industry have been disappointed in Adams' performance in getting legislation through Congress, particularly in light of his 12 years in the House. Adams has also clashed with the White House on several issues since being named to the cabinet last year. He has been at odds over such matters as airline deregulation and linking transportation needs to increased gasoline taxes. Vice President Walter Mondale told the wife of Soviet dissident Anatoly Sharansky today that he was very moved by her husband's statement after he was sentenced to 13 years in a Soviet prison on treason charges. Mondale told Avital Sharansky that all Americans were impressed by Sharansky's dignity in the face of the violation of his human rights. Mondale also reiterated the Carter administration's position that the Sharansky trial was a violation of the Helsinki Accord on Human Rights. Egypt has made new peace proposals to Israel, but Foreign Minister Moshe Dayan says they will have no effect 
on his meeting beginning today outside London with Egyptian Foreign Minister Mohammed Kamel. Diane says that the proposals are not relevant to the meeting, and that leads observers to feel the proposals deal with the return of the Sinai Peninsula to Egypt and not with the deadlock over the occupied West Bank of the Jordan and the future of that area's Palestinians. Egyptian President Anwar Sadat apparently would agree to Israel keeping some of the territory and apparently to keeping an Israeli military presence on the West Bank after a peace agreement. A rather deadly Sunday around the country, and particularly here close to home. We'll have those stories and more news still to come. This machine is making carpet, quality carpet, in short shag and high-low styles like these. And now you can buy 300 square feet of it, enough to carpet three average rooms wall-to-wall -wall from just $195, thick foam padding included and professional installation from only $195. Three rooms carpeted in beautiful colors and styles. Your choice of high-low or short shag in solid colors or tweeds. All 100% nylon pile carpet from just $195. Fantastic prices. Plus 5,000 blue chip stamps absolutely free with purchase. And be sure to ask us about our easy terms. Call Richmond 92011 for a free estimate or call Richmond 92011 Collect. But do call it right now. That's Richmond 9 2011 Direct or Collect. Richmond 9 2011. Wet your whistle. Lip quencher. Wet your whistle with the wet, wonderful colors of Lip Quencher. There's no lipstick quite like Lip Quencher. Created by chapstick, drenched with moisturizers, so your lips feel as good as they look. Lip quencher. Wet your whistle. Recently, I converted to Hebrew National Kosher hot dogs. Improper? Not at all. My friends, there's no such thing as a religious hot dog. Hebrew National is a better hot dog. Unlike most hot dogs, it contains only pure, fresh beef and natural flavorings. No meat byproducts, artificial coloring, or fillers. It tastes absolutely divine. To me, anything less just wouldn't be kosher. Six workers closing an Oklahoma City steakhouse for the night last night were murdered by robbers who forced them to, at gunpoint into a walk-in freezer and then shot each of them in the head. Four of the te victims were teenagers. More than $1,000 missing from the restaurant safe, the worst mass murder in the city of Oklahoma City in recent memory. L.A. Sheriff's deputies say that an eight-year-old Santa Fe Springs girl was not the latest victim of the Hillside Strangler. The body of little Cheryl Gutierrez was found last night in the Whittier Narrows Recreation Area. Coroner's deputies say she had been strangled and molested. A 21-year-old Los Angeles man has hanged himself in his cell in the Venice Police Division Jail. Officers say that Michael Mabin tore up his mattress cover, tied it around the cell door bars, and then around his neck. He had been in jail since Saturday on grand theft auto charges. And police say that gang activity may have been behind the shooting death of one young man, the wounding of a second in L.A. early today. Police say the unidentified victims were standing in front of 4211 East Olympic Boulevard about 2.30 this morning when they were shot from a passing car. The Oxnard jury and tax reformer Howard Jarvis's drunk driving trial returned to its deliberations this morning and quickly asked to hear some key testimony again. The jury deliberated four and a half hours on Friday without reaching a verdict. The jury is rehearing testimony from Deputy Michael Kipp, who stopped Jarvis near Thousand Oaks last March 15th. Kipp says that Jarvis's car was weaving and that the 75-year-old Jarvis failed field sobriety tests by being unable to walk a straight line and recite the alphabet. Mayor Tom Bradley is urging the city council to pass a six-month moratorium on rent increases. The mayor says the city can't rely on apartment associations to police themselves. He says, quote, we've got to pass some kind of measure that takes care of all the landlords of this city, including the greedy, end quote. And West Los Angeles State Assemblyman Herschel Rosenthal says he's going to ask for a similar rental moratorium at the state level. Rosenthal explains that he would have to amend an existing bill because no new legislation can be introduced this late in the session. I favor a rollback to May 31st, a six-month moratorium, which would self-destruct and would not require the legislature to take a negative or positive vote uh, at that point, that would include in it only those areas of the state where there was a vacancy factor 
of 3% or less, because that appears, in everybody's opinion, to be the critical point at which there are either apartments available or not, and that would um, uh, limit those uh, units to uh, uh, above 10 units. In other words, the mom and pop kinds of operations where there's a relationship that exists between the person who owns the property and the person who's leasing the property uh, is usually much more friendly than the absentee landowner who has a, a company that's managing the property, uh, which does exist in the larger units. Rosenthal says that a six-month rent moratorium would give legislators time to completely study the question of who should be included and who should be exempted. In the wake of the passage of Prop 13 have come reports of massive rent increases and windfalls for business and industry. There is one firm in San Jose which is passing on some of its savings to its employees. John Lester reports. Halcyon is one of the numerous computer manufacturers in the South Bay. The seven-year-old California-based firm has some 120 employees, annually grosses millions of dollars. Because of Jarvis Gann, Halcyon's business property tax has been reduced by $19,000. Instead of making a profit on their windfall, this company has decided to pass their rebate on to their employees every week in the form of silver dollars. This amounts to about $140 per employee for for the year. In essence, these silver dollars will go into circulation instead of being paid to the federal government in the form of taxes. Larry Whitaker says if all California-owned firms were to rebate their tax savings on to employees, the state's economy would benefit by some three billion dollars, cutting inflation and balancing the budget. I'd like to challenge all the rest of the businessmen to start handing out these silver dollars. The amount we're talking about, 143 of these silver dollars per year, per employee in this valley. That's approximately what they need to hand out. I think it's a great idea. I think the rest of the businessmen in California should probably take an example from this and start doing it themselves and return some of the money to the back to the citizens from Proposition 13 because this has turned into a landfall for the companies that they didn't expect. So they should share it. I'm going to put them all away. How many did you get? Let me see them. I got six. Six silver dollars. Mm -hmm. Are you going to save these? Yes, I am. What do you think about this idea? Well, I think it's a pretty good idea. I really think that I hope more companies take this over because I, I know they help the morale around here a lot. Emergency telephone connections to the Central L.A. Police District are back in operation after being inoperative for nearly four hours this morning. During that outage, callers needing emergency service had to go through the O operator. Well, you can chalk up another victory for the legendary good taste and community pride of Beverly Hills. You'll remember that when we last visited the sumptuous estate of Arabian Sheikh Mohammed Al Fasi, the statuary, in a manner of speaking, had its lilies gilded. As a tourist attraction, it was first rate, a real boon for the Grey Lion tours. But the Sheikh is on record as wanting to be a good neighbor, and so the painted pudunda had been replaced by eagles, urns, and the statues more decorously draped. The change was made almost surreptitiously. The Sheikh's security guards say that the painted statues were there flashing one day and gone the next. The dogs had their day on Friday showing off their stuff at the Gaines Canine Frisbee Catch and Fetch competition held here in Los Angeles. It's the first step in the selection of the best four-footed Frisbee catcher. About 35 dogs were entered in the qualifying finals held at Griffith Park. And contestants like this, a field of nine dogs will be chosen, chosen that is, to compete in the world final match next month. There have always been dogs that caught frisbees, but this is the first time we've formalized the competition. It's been kind of a groundswell movement. What do you consider a, a, a good, good mark for a dog and a trainer? Uh, in this competition, I would say somewhere in the 20s would be excellent. In the 20s? Really and, excellent. And, and like what kind of things does a dog have to do? Well, the only thing they have to do in this particular contest is to perform for two minutes. They get two minutes to make as many catches as they can at a 15-yard distance. And uh, they get one point if they make a catch and two points if they have all four paws off the ground. So basically, they're competing on their own merit. And uh, we add up the totals. And the one who has the highest point total obviously wins. Some of the owners estimated their pet's chances of taking the Frisbee title. I think she has a good shot at it. If I can just get her up in the air. You think she'll ever make it uh, against Ashley? Ashley Whippet? I don't know. He's, he's, he's pretty... Uh, goes up like Boy, 10 so feet or something. <laughs> I don't think she'll go that high, maybe three or four at the most. Well, he loves to catch frisbees, so that's why we're here. Come all the way from Calabasas to sure. do this. You think he has a chance? 
course. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if he didn't. <laughs> yes. Yes, he has a chance. They all have a chance. The nine dogs chosen in regional competition will vie for the top title on August 27th at the Rose Bowl. We'll have more news for Monday afternoon in just a moment. As you watch me right now, I'm reducing my risk of heart attack because I'm using the incredible Dynavit, the world's first computerized cardiovascular exercise system. Give Dynavit's computer your age, your weight, and sex, and Dynavit calculates your energy output, monitors heart rate, shows calories worked off, and controls your exercise. Ten minutes a day on Dynavit is equivalent to jogging, swimming, and cycling, and can be better than hours of racquetball, golf, or tennis. Exercise can help reduce risk of heart attacks, improve physical fitness, and help control weight. You'll look better, feel better, and Dynavit exercise could help you live longer. Dynavit is easy and convenient. Use it in home or office, rain or shine, recommended by doctors the world over. Get our free booklet by return mail. Call 800-528-6050, toll free. That's 800-528-6050, toll free. 800-528-6050. Wow, did I need money. So you know what I did. What you did was like borrowing money from yourself. Right. Because you own your own home, and it has a cash equity you can borrow on. Right. You called Capital Home Loan. Yeah, Capital Home Loan. They arranged easy monthly payments. Yeah, fast, and they were human. It's very simple. It's like borrowing from yourself through Capital Home Loan. Look in the phone book. One of our proudest traditions is a deep respect for the law. Respect for the law means more than lip service. Soon we will begin the first phase of desegregation in our schools as the court has ordered. It is the law. We've always been a law-abiding community. With your help, everything necessary will be done to maintain that peace and harmony. Our kids learn a lot from us. Let's make sure what we teach them is positive. Let's be proud of our town. A fire from the spontaneous combustion of nitrocellulose film did more than $100,000 damage to a Studio City home, once owned by the late comedian Lou Costello. That type of film is no longer used. It does have a tendency to spontaneously ignite when its chemicals decompose as they age. The blaze started in a film vault in the garage. The We Tip organization, which was set up to provide police with anonymous tips on drug pushers and then expanded to include major crimes, has expanded again to ask the public for tips on arsonists. Phil C. Schneros reports. Statewide last year, there were 16 arson-related deaths and about $28 million in damage. Those figures are for confirmed arsons only. Fire officials say many arsons go undetected or unproved, and they estimate much higher death and damage tolls. Additionally, more than $150 million in extra insurance premiums are being paid by Californians because of arson. The War on Arson program is designed to lower the numbers. The WeTip organization is now asking the public to take part in their anonymous witness program. And there's an added incentive. And this poster, uh, 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 nailed to and placed on uh, buildings that have been burned as a result of incendiary or suspicious causes, uh, will undoubtedly inspire uh, people to provide information and tips on that uh, incident that uh, would not otherwise come forward. Uh, because of the guarantee, uh, in WeTip's experience, the guarantee of anonymity and the probability of a reward up to and including $500 uh, for that information. In the Los Angeles area, arsons have increased 100% in the past 10 years. Apprehension and prosecution of arsonists, however, has been seriously lagging, to say the least. Example, the Stanford Arms Apartments downtown. Two people died here. It was an arson, but no one has been charged. There have been 17 set fires in this immediate area in the last 90 days. As with most arsons, the difficulty in this case lies not with determining arson, but with having enough supporting evidence to prosecute a suspect. Most good arson investigators have no problem establishing that arson was committed. The tough part of arson is developing a suspect and connecting the suspect to the crime, just as in any other crime. If you don't have some sort of uh, witness or some sort of evidence to develop a suspect, you're not going to get a, uh, uh, an arrest and a conviction. 
So really arson is not hard to prove. It's the continuing follow-up and the investigation. That's the tough part of arson. Because in arson, uh, there are few people that want to come forward and say, I saw somebody do this or give information to the investigator. Fire officials say they hope the anonymous witness program for arsons will have as much success as other crime prevention plans. After all, they say, arson is a crime and it affects everybody. Phil Cisneros, Channel 9 News, Los Angeles. Stocks and weather, still to come. In Japan, the hand can be used like a knife. But... This method doesn't work with a tomato. That's why we use the Ginsu. It's a knife that no kitchen should be without. The Ginsu can cut a slice of bread so thin you can almost see through it. It cuts meat better than an electric knife and goes through frozen food as though it were melted butter. The Ginsu is so sharp it can cut through a tin can and still slice a tomato like this. It can chop wood and still remain razor sharp. What's more, it's a knife that will last forever. How much would you pay for a knife like this? Before you answer, listen. It even comes with a matching fork to make carving a pleasure. Wait, there's much, much more. We also want you to have this six-in-one kitchen tool. It peels and slivers carrots, peels potatoes, and slices paper-thin potato chips. This amazing little knife even grates carrots, grates cheese, and makes beautiful decorative vegetables. How much would you pay for all these items? Well, we'll even give you this set of six precision steak knives. The handles even match the Ginsu. And to make the offer completely irresistible, you'll get this unique spiral slicer. Down and down, around and around, and you'll have a beautiful garnish for your dinner table. Now how much would you pay? You get the Ginsu knife, the matching carving fork, the versatile six-in-one kitchen tool, a set of six steak knives, and the spiral slicer. You get them all, guaranteed in writing for 50 years, for only $9.95. It's the most incredible knife offer ever. Here's how to order. To order, call toll-free 1-800-228-2035. Save the COD charges, send $9.95 to Knife Set, Box 15955, Los Angeles, California, 90015. You get the Ginsu knife, matching carving fork, six-in-one kitchen tool, six steak knives, and spiral slicer, plus a 50-year guarantee. So send $9.95 to Knife Set, Box 15955, Los Angeles, or call 1-800-228-2035. Stock prices closed mixed in active trading on the New York Stock Exchange today. 29,190,000 shares changed hands. Somewhat cooler after our blistering weekend, but we still have a couple of smog problems. Daytime highs 85, low tonight 65, good air only along the coast, unhealthful air elsewhere. Well, John Travolta, you better move over. You may have looked spiffy in your white suit in Saturday Night Fever, but there is something new happening at the disco. Disco t-shirts, electronic ones with little lights that flash. They're just arriving here from New York, where they were pioneered by Gary Brennan. He is the man who brought us the Star Wars laser sword light. All you need is a 9-volt battery, and you, too, can light up your life. Basically, it's a small 9-volt battery that works off some computer circuitry, like a miniature computer circuit, and uh, lights up tiny little lights that go across the front of the shirt. It's very effective at night, particularly. Obviously, when a person is disco dancing or any kind of dancing, you're going to perspire. Does that, is there any danger of being shocked? Not at all. It's a small transistor battery, and you could, you could eat the battery is about the worst thing that could happen. The electric t-shirts sell for about $24. They say such innocuous and uninspired things as boogie, a touch of class, sexy, and Rolls Royce. But who reads when you're in a disco? Just watch the flashing lights. That's the news on this Monday. Nathan Roberts, Ann Kessner, Hilly Rose, and Lynn Shackleford here tonight at 10. I'm Chris Harris. Have a good day and a good week. Here with the Channel 9 editorial is KHJ-TV Vice President and General Manager, Lionel Shane. The Los Angeles County Supervisors are, are talking again about the idea of placing a measure on the November ballot to create the office of county mayor. The idea is that there are too many differences of opinion among the present five supervisors on matters important to the seven million citizens who elect them. It has been suggested that having one chief executive for the county 
will simplify and streamline the procedures of county government. At present, the five supervisors serve as legislators, as the executive, and are also quasi-judicial in their function. The problem, as we at KSJ-TV view it, will be that we... This is Bill Barry. We hope you've enjoyed our features on Movies Till Dawn. Stay tuned now for News 1.